Hey there everyone and welcome to WordPress series. In this video, we're going to talk about the LAMP stack. Now, before I get started and going, uh, let me tell you that in this WordPress series, first of all, you should be aware of that WordPress is being designed in PHP and MySQL. Now, in order to run the PHP and MySQL, you need a LAMP stack. So you might be wondering, what is this LAMP stack? The LAMP stack simply stands for Linux, Apache, MySQL and PHP. And in order to run MySQL and PHP, you need Apache, which usually run on the Linux. Now, here's a quick sidebar. In case you want to run your WordPress website onto a real server uh, just by buying a hosting and domain, make sure you're looking for a Linux hosting, not the Windows hosting or any other hosting. You're looking for a Linux hosting. Yes, I am aware that some of the uh, these domain providers and web providers uh, do give you special hosting for WordPress. That is fine too, but you don't need that. You can just work fine with the Linux. Now, Linux doesn't mean you have to work on uh, these terminals and command lines. It has a full graphical interface and there is no such thing to be worried about. Okay, coming back onto the topic, we do require a LAMP stack. Now, these stacks are available for all the platform, Linux, uh, of course, for Linux, uh, Windows, and Mac. In this video, we are gonna install XAMPP on Windows, but I'm also gonna be giving you all the options that are available for all. In the next video, we, we will be installing all these things for Mac, but right now, here is the Windows target for us. Okay, so of course, there are various options, and just like always in every other course, I give you all the options which are available, and I choose one of them, and I also mention why I'm choosing one of them. So first of all is the VAMP and notice I'm always uh, using a Google search so that even if the link changes out a little bit, you can just find that. So this is the first guy, which is a VAMP server. Now this is especially for Windows. It's a Windows Apache MySQL PHP server, uh, especially being designed for Windows. It's pretty simple, pretty easy. You just next, next, right click. Okay, I agree, install. And it just gives you a, in the bottom right corner, a special uh, notification type of thing. And from there, you can just install a www directory and whatever we are going to do is also possible in the VAMP server. Now, my favorite one is the XAMPP. And the reason is it's almost similar in the interface uh, in Windows as well as in Linux. It's uh, kind of a very reputed one, uh, but again, I'm a big fan of XAMPP. I always like to use XAMPP and uh, kind of a personal preference, but there is no such amazing thing that you cannot do in uh, VAMP that you can do in XAMPP. It's all means the same. So yes, it's available for Linux, Windows, and Mac as well. And the final one is MAMP. Now, if I go into the map, there are two versions of the map, the map and the map pro. You don't need a map pro for this, at least of this series. Uh, you can completely work on map. Again, very easy to use. I already have it on my system, but still I'm gonna be installing XAMPP. Uh, to be honest, I love the map interface. It's so simple, so easy that you can work on with. But again, uh, we'll talk about the Mac guys later on. MAMP is not available for Windows uh, as of now. Even uh, there are some things working on with the windows things but it's not working that well so i won't recommend that on uh, windows as well now there is one more option known as bitnami now this is very popular and in case you want to work on you kind of a you are kind of an advanced user you might want to check this out because it gives you a lot of freedom uh, with the, this thing now bitnami can be installed pre-installed with a, a wordpress kind of thing you can have a wordpress and already being set up I don't recommend this also for this special course because we will be exploring the WordPress quite in detail. Yes, if you are an advanced user of that level of PHP, you can always go with this guy. It's amazing and I would say uh, there are a lot of options that you can work and especially the cloud option that you can run the entire Bitnami into a cloud in case you are using like Amazon Web Services or Oracle Cloud Platform or something like that, then it's amazing and it can be run totally onto the browser as well. So yes, kind of a very good, but not our choice. In this entire series, we are gonna be using XAMPP. Yes, it's always my duty uh, to tell you about the other options as well. Okay, let's minimize this guy and move back to our windows. Uh, this is our windows, uh, doesn't look really amazing, but this is what we have. So I have already installed, uh, I have already downloaded the XAMPP, not installed, but always VAMP is also an option. Uh, let's minimize this and uh, it's a VAMP server here. I'm gonna double click on that and installation is pretty simple. I'm gonna just click on yes there. And basically you always have to walk through with yes, yes, I agree, yes, and usual kind of stuff. And you can see the XAMPP is also being configured for Bitnami and all these things. Uh, so it says, uh, let's just click on okay. Uh, next, and it says what all the things that you want to install. 
Now, it also installs like us uh, webmail, PHP, MyAdmin, and all these things. We do require all of that. Now, for this course, you don't require Tomcat and Mercury Mail Server or FileZilla FTP Server, but still, these are good options. So I'm going to uh, left them as it is. And I'm going to install that into C colon slash uh, XAMPP. Make sure you note down this directory because it's going to be handy for some time. Okay. I don't want to learn more about the Bitnami. I already know about it, but in case you want to do, go ahead and do that. It's pretty easy. Now installation will unpack the files and we'll do regular stuff. So I'm going to fast forward the video here. Okay, so finally the installation is done and it's asking me, do you want to start the control panel now? Yes, of course, I do want to start that. And there we go, it says which you really want to have and I'm gonna go with the English and save. Not a good way of actually asking for that with that flag there, I don't recommend that, but still what we can do. Okay, so things looks really good and what I want to do is start a couple of services like Apache, MySQL. These are the ones that I would like to start right now. So let's just go ahead and start this and start this guy as well. And yes, always allow the internet access there. Okay, and make sure you're having an exception in firewalls as well. And there we go. It has started. Okay. And now it says it's running looks pretty good and uh, we are and i always recommend to install a server and install a web browser something like uh, chrome if you are on a windows you might be already having that and let's just start with the config and uh, looks pretty good okay standard things and uh, let's just also explore into explorer okay so this is all the fold all the folder that you are going to require notice it's inside the c drive xamp and the one important folder that you should be looking up is the htdocs. Now inside the htdocs, you'll find a lot of folders. And this is where we are going to keep all of our file inside the htdocs. It's super important. Okay, let's just try and launch it and make sure that it works. I'm not pretty sure it's going to run really well on this browser, but let's just see. And we're going to call, oops, localhost there. Okay, so in case you hit the local host and you see something like this, that means everything is working fine. Let's also verify going into the PHP my admin. And there we go, our PHP my admin is also working fine. But there are a couple of settings that you have to do in the Mac. It's not, uh, this is simple, really simple, but in the Mac you have to do one more configuration. We'll talk about that in the next video, don't worry about that. So looks, everything looks pretty good, pretty fine to me. Make sure that you keep an eye on this htdocs folder. Whenever you're going to create a new folder inside in here, it is going to be reflected there. Just for an example, I'm gonna right click, click on the new, and I'm gonna create a folder that says LCO. And I'm gonna go inside this, and I'm gonna create a new file here, okay? And a new text document, it's gonna be called as index.html. And there we go, still it's a text document. And the reason is uh, there are some options which are hidden. Uh, so I'm gonna delete that. And I'm gonna simply say delete. I want to create an HTML file. So let me open up a text editor. And in case I do remember, I do have Sublime here. There we go. And make sure you have an editor, at least a Sublime text. And uh, we're gonna write something, oops. HTML, come on. I don't have an emit here, but again, uh, we can just have an h1 tag, no big deal. And let's just write a test here, h1, come on, there we go. And we're gonna save this inside our uh, C drive, this PC. And we want to go into C drive. Okay, a lot of folders and drives are there. Make sure you are able to find your C drive, okay, in the XAMPP. We're going to go into htdocs and inside the LCO and we're going to name this as index.html. Click on save and there we go. We are having a file. Now in order to access this file, all you have to do is 
go on to your local host and instead of php my admin oops not like that you have to just write whatever your folder name is in this case it's lco so this is a basic run of how you run the programs and files how to find them and all these things this is a basic thing so make sure you have a chrome browser i would highly recommend that i will be using the chrome throughout this course and i'll be using apache mysql this xamp stack throughout this course and also make sure you have a couple of browsers i do recommend sublime text and atom to be installed on your system all the time so that's it and i think we have done a pretty good job in installing all the things for the windows and in case you are facing any problem do notify me in the discussion section or in the comment section i would be looking forward for that so that's it for this video and i'll surely catch you up in the next one